Welcome to the Edec Risk Institute. Today we are going to talk about the efficient harvesting of equity risk premium. First, we are going to talk about cap weighted benchmarks and their inability to allow for this efficient harvesting of equity risk premium. Then we are going to talk about smart benchmarks, benchmarks that have been designed to more efficiently harvest this risk premium. And then eventually we are going to talk about smart factor benchmarks, which is the next step in smart factor investing. Okay, let's get started with the cap-weighted benchmarks. Cap-weighted benchmarks tend to be inefficient portfolios. And the reason why they are inefficient portfolios is because they suffer from two main shortcomings, two main limitations. And it's really important to keep in mind that they do not suffer from a single limitation, they actually suffer from two main problems. And it is only if we can fix both of these problems that we can turn these portfolios into better portfolios, into more efficient portfolios. The first problem or the first shortcoming of cap-weighted benchmark is because of the very nature of the way the indices are constructed based on the weighting which is proportional to the market cap of the individual stocks. Well, that tends to lead to an excessive concentration. There are very few stocks that tend to be the very largest stocks that tend to dominate the rest of the portfolio. As a result of that, these cap-weighted indices provide a poor diversification of fund-rewarded specific risks. Because they are concentrated portfolios, they contain an excess of uncompensated risks. And this is all wrong. The only reason why investors care for risk-taking, it's not because they enjoy risk-taking. They actually do not like risk-taking. The only reason why they accept risk-taking is because they, accept the fair, they expect to get the fair reward in exchange for risk-taking. Well, they are not going to get it with cap-weighted benchmark. Now, turns out that there's another problem, which is an independent problem. This other problem is that cap-weighted benchmark, they also provide a poor diversification of rewarded systematic risks. So wh what I mean by this is that the set of factor exposures is actually highly inefficient. Think again, for example, about you know, the most commonly used factors in equity markets, namely the Fama French value and size factors, referring to the well-known finding, empirical finding that value stocks tend to dominate, outperform, outperform growth stocks and that smaller cap stocks tend to outperform larger cap stocks. Now we understand why this is the case. It is the case presumably because value and size are proxy for underlying risk factors. And value stocks and small cap stocks tend to be riskier than growth stocks and large cap stocks respectively. Now the problem is, again by the very nature of the way they are constructed, Cap-weighted indices tend to overweight the wrong stocks. They overweight the largest cap stocks and they overweight the growth stocks. So they get the wrong factor exposure. They have a growth bias, while well, they should have a value bias, and they have a large cap bias, while well, they should have a small or mid cap bias, if they were to efficiently harvest the value and size risk premium. Okay, so we want to think about a better way to construct a benchmark. And a cap-weighted benchmark is not necessarily the smartest of all these benchmarks. Smart benchmark is a name, which is not necessarily a very good name, but that's the name that we use in the investment industry to talk about benchmarks that have been constructed in a way that is slightly better, with a different approach and different way of, of, of handling the benchmark construction process. Now, some of these benchmarks, or the first generation of these smart benchmarks, have been introduced to fix the first problem. Remember, the first problem was concentration and lack of diversification, which was leading to an excess of unrewarded risk. Well, let's take a look at a few examples of these so-called smart benchmarks. Equally weighted benchmarks, this is known as naive diversification. Naive diversification doesn't sound like it's really smart, but because cap-weighted are so concentrated and so poorly diversified, even in a naive, equally weighted portfolio tend to outperform on a risk-adjusted basis the cap-weighted portfolio based on the same stocks. Now, there are other 
slightly more sophisticated benchmarks or smart benchmarks called as risk parity benchmarks. In this case, the focus is not an, on equal allocation to dollars within the, within the portfolio, but an equal contribution of the components of the portfolio with respect to the riskiness of the total portfolio. So that's a more sophisticated way of thinking about naive diversification, if you will. There's other benchmarks, minimum volatility benchmark, for example, are extremely popular and have been shown to outperform on a risk-adjusted basis the cap-weighted benchmarks as well. Now, these approaches are kind of attractive because they lead to better diversification, either from a naive perspective or from a more scientific perspective. The problem, though, is that they imply their own biases in terms of factor exposure. Think about the following examples. If you're looking at an equally weighted benchmark, well, it's kind of nice. You're going to overweight now the smaller cap stocks compared to the large ca larger cap stocks. Well, you actually don't overweight anything. You make them all equal. But compared to a cap-weighted benchmark, you reduce the allocation to the largest cap stocks, so you induce a small cap bias relative to the large cap index. Now, they also tend to have a low vol bias. If you use the best possible estimate for the covariance matrix to build up a risk parity portfolio or minimum variance portfolio, that will lead to overweighting the low vol stocks. Now, I'm not saying it's necessarily, necessarily, necessarily wrong or bad to have this small cap bias or this low vol bias, for example. But what I'm saying is, we don't even control where the bias is. The, the bias is an artifact of the weighting scheme. Well, if you think about cap-weighted benchmarks suffering from two main limitations, one, the fact that they are too concentrated, but also the fact that they have the wrong or unintended set of factor exposures. What we need to do is we need to fix both problems. And how do we do this? Well, we do this by achieving a well-rewarded exposure. And well-rewarded comes from better diversified. So a better diversified, better rewarded exposure to explicitly selected risk factors. So as opposed to having a weighting scheme decide for ourselves what the factor bias will turn out to be, we would like to be proactive. And you know, having an explicit choice in terms of the factor exposure that we like to hold. Well, that's exactly what you can do with the so-called smart factor indices or smart factor benchmarks. Step number one, an asset owner, let's say a pension plan, CIO of a pension plan, well, they are going to express desire over the kind of factor exposures that they like or that they think is good for them as a function of their goals, of their liabilities, of their objectives, of their constraints. You can think about value as a potential tilt. You can think about size as another potential tilt. You can see, think about momentum, winners versus losers, as a potential tilt that you like to get exposed to because we have seen accumulated evidence that momentum is rewarded in the long run. You might be tempted to look at low vol. Again, we've seen accumulated evidence that the low vol stocks tend to outperform the high vol stocks. This has been called the low vol anomaly. If anything, we would expect the opposite. But it turns out, for a number of reasons that are related to market frictions, constraints on leverage, and maybe other factors such as implicit interest rate risk exposure, regardless of what is the, the reason why this has happened, historically, low vol stocks have outperformed the high vol stocks. Step number one, you're going to pick which one or which ones of these factor exposures that you think are good for you. Step number two, you're going to select a weighting scheme. What I mean by a weighting scheme? Well, I mean some kind of diversification strategy. And the point is that you'd like to diversify away stock specific risk, which we all know is unrewarded and therefore unneeded. So again, you could be using an equally weighted portfolio. You could be using a minimum volatility weighting scheme. You could be using a risk parity weighting scheme. Or you could be using some other weighting schemes that, you know, 
for some reason you think will do a good job at diversifying away specific risk. Now, what you could also do is you could actually diversify away all the risks involved in the choice of the best winning scheme by holding some combination of those three, four, five winning schemes. This is what we call a diversified multi-strategy. And the beauty of the diversified multi-strategy is kind of provides a smoother outperformance by diversifying away the market conditions under which each one of these wedding schemes tend to be, you know, strong and dominate other wedding schemes. Now, once you do that, you come to the conclusion, to the empirical finding that those smart factor benchmarks are better rewarded. Well, let's take a look at this. So first of all, what we're seeing here is we're looking at the performance over the time period that goes from 1974 to 2014. So it's a long, long time period, something like 50 years worth of data. And then we're looking at the performance, actually 40 years worth of data in this case. And we're going to look at the performance of the S&P 500 index. Now the S&P 500 index performance was on the period 12.16% annualized and for volatility of about 17%. The resulting Sharpe ratio is 0.41. Well, that's what you got for anyone invested in the S&P 500 index over the period of time. Now, if you go for a selection of half of the universe, so 250 stocks that have the lowest market cap, let's call them mid-cap stocks, then you get a better Sharpe ratio. You get 0.59. And again, this is cap weighted. Pass winners, better sharp ratio, 0.46. Again, this is cap weighted. So the benefits that we're looking at are not coming from a better diversification, of course, because we're looking at fewer stocks, 250 as opposed to 500. And they are still cap weighted. So there's lots of concentration in this portfolio. And yet this portfolio does this portfolio do better in terms of sharp ratio to compared to cap weighted. Well, simply because they point at the right factor exposure the past winners, and the value stocks. Well, the same applies for the low-vol stocks, and this is the low-vol anomaly that we looked at. The low-vol stocks tend to outperform, and more importantly, they tend to have a substantially lower volatility. So in terms of sharp ratio, this is a gain. And also in terms of the value factor, as you can see, 0.48 here, that's a better uh, sharp ratio. Now, this better sharp ratio comes at the cost, and the cost can be seen in terms of max drawdown. So the max drawdown is about 55% for the cap-weighted S&P 500 index, and it's even worse. For the size factor, it's about 60%. And if you look at, say, the low-vol stocks, it's better. But if you look at the value factor, it's 61. So some of these factors actually tend to do really poorly in the worst market conditions. And by the way, that's probably why they are rewarded. Now, if you start introducing the benefit of a better weighting scheme, and in this case, we use a multi-diversified uh, uh, weighting scheme. In other words, we use a combination of five smart weighting schemes. Then you get a further improvement in terms of sharp ratio, 0.70 as opposed to 0.59 for the selection of mid-cap stocks. And here again, we get an improvement. And there again, for the level factor, we also get an improvement. And finally, we get also an improvement on the value factor. So we get an improvement on both directions. Improvement coming from the selection of the right factor exposure and an improvement coming from the right winning scheme. Remember, what you should do is invest and also eat healthily by allocating to stocks that have the right factor exposure, just like you would like to eat the kind of food that have the right composition in terms of underlying nutrients. Mm -hmm.